and order of service for noonday. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Psalm 33, verses 12 through 22. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the people in the world. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance, for all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait upon his love. To pluck their lives from death and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him, for in his holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us as we have put our trust in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14 through 22, 29. Jesus said, It is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed me over you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over me to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent so take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The Word of the Lord. Today, the Church commemorates King Kamehameha and Queen Emma of Hawaii. Within a year of ascending the throne in 1855, the 20-year-old King Kamehameha IV and his bride, Emma Rook, embarked on the path of altruism and unassuming humility for which they have been revered by their people. 
The year before, Honolulu, and especially its native Hawaiians, had been horribly afflicted by smallpox. The people, accustomed to a royalty which ruled with pomp and power, were confronted instead by a king and queen who went about with notebook in hand, soliciting from rich and poor the funds to build a hospital. Queen's Hospital, named for Emma, is now the largest civilian hospital in Hawaii. In 1860, the king and queen petitioned the Bishop of Oxford to send missionaries to establish the Anglican Church in Hawaii. The king's interest came through a boyhood tour of England where he had seen, in the stately beauty of Anglican liturgy, a quality that seemed attuned to the gentle beauty of the Hawaiian spirit. England responded by sending the Right Reverend Thomas N. Staley with, and two priests. They arrived on October 11, 1862, and the king and queen were confirmed a month later on November 28, 1862. They then began preparations for cathedral and school, and the king set about to translate the Book of Common Prayer and much of the hymnal. Kamehameha's life was marred by the tragic death of his four-year-old son and only child in 1863. He seemed unable to survive his sadness. Although a sermon he preached after his son's death expresses a hope and faith that is eloquent and profound. His own death took place only a year after his son's in 1864. Emma declined to rule. Instead, she committed her life to good works. She was responsible for schools, churches, and efforts on behalf of, the, behalf of the poor and the sick. She traveled several times to England and the continent to raise funds and became a favorite of Queen Victoria's. Archbishop Longley of Canterbury remarked upon her visit to Lambeth, I was much struck by the cultivation of her mind, but what excited my interest most was her almost saintly piety. The cathedral was completed after Emma died. It was named St. Andrews, in memory of the king who died on that saint's day. Among the Hawaiian people, Emma is still referred to as our beloved queen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. O sovereign God, who raised up, uh, raised up King Kamehameha IV and Queen Emma to be rulers in Hawaii and inspired and enabled them to be diligent in good works for the welfare of their people and the good of your church. Receive our thanks for their witness to the gospel 
and grant that we with them may attain to the crown of glory that never fades away through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 